You know, the flu is something that thousands of Manitobans experience every year. You know the symptoms, the headaches, the fevers, the chills. A few days of bed rest and you're fine. But back in 1918, a particularly virulent form of flu hit Manitoba and thousands died. In 1918, the Spanish flu killed 50,000 Canadians, an estimated six deaths for every 1,000 people. Globally, the estimates ranged from 30 million people to maybe as many as 50 million people. In fact, the flu killed more people than the First World War killed soldiers for all of the countries of the world combined. The end of the First World War brought good news to many Manitoba families. Their sons, their brothers, their fathers were coming home. What they didn't realize is their loved ones were bringing back an uninvited visitor, the Influenza A virus, that had first been reported at a military base in Kansas. The first serious flu outbreak in Portage La Prairie was in October of 1918. Two days later, in an attempt to control the disease, the city council banned all public gatherings. Unfortunately, the armistice broke out and the celebrations occurred, forcing local doctor Sam Cowan to set up an emergency quarantine hospital in the local hotel. By November, there were 400 cases of flu in Portage. In Winnipeg, there were 700 cases reported every day. We're on the site of the former Island Park Nursery. It was established here in 1912 by Ontario businessman Benjamin Darcy Wallace. Wallace was a well-known name in Western Canada. By the height of his power, he owned over 2,000 acres from Manitoba to Alberta. And he was a well-known figure among horticulturalists. In 1889, he had married Amanda Ferrand, and five years later, they had their only child, daughter Elva Millicent. We're here in St. Mary's La Prairie Anglican Church. It's the summer of 1917, and 23-year-old Elva Wallace is here to marry Portage boy Roy McCarthy. Within a couple of months, the Wallaces are looking forward to the birth of their first grandchild. Unfortunately, by the spring of 1918, their joy has turned to sorrow. They're back here to bury their daughter and their grandchild among the first victims of the flu pandemic here in Portage La Prairie. This is where the story takes a really strange twist. Reportedly, the Colonel bought a crystal coffin. He put it in the mausoleum behind me and then faithfully, till his own death in 1936, the Colonel would visit his daughter and grandchild Is she really in a crystal coffin inside? No one really knows. 